Last year, more than 50,000 Americans died by suicide, more than any year on record. That's according to the CDC. September is Suicide Prevention Month, a time to raise awareness of this widespread problem. And joining us today to share hope and vital information is Christy Buck and Rachel Bragginton with Be Nice, a group that promotes mental health, first aid, and suicide prevention through education. Ladies, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. Christy, let's start with you first. Just talk a little bit more about Be Nice, the work that you're doing right now, and what are you noticing when it comes to mental health here in West Michigan. You got it. So Be Nice is an action plan and it is a program that is implemented in schools, businesses, community, and then athletic teams. And so the idea behind Be Nice is to learn the plan and that is notice, invite, challenge, and empower. When we know the plan, notice being the most important step, we can notice symptoms, risk factors, and invite ourselves into a conversation and hoping, challenging that person with resources that are available. And ultimately, empowerment. Empowerment to give somebody hope, to let someone know that there is help and that they can be better and they can be okay. Let's talk about that conversation. If you notice someone you know, in crisis who is struggling, how do you go about starting that conversation? I love the plan because the plan starts with the first step and that is what we have noticed. So the start of the conversation can be, Amber, I'm concerned about you. What I've noticed is, is you're different right now. I'm worried and concerned about you. You're not coming to work on time. You're not carrying out daily activities that you love. You're not responding to my texts or you're isolating yourself in your room. Whatever you are noticing, you are gonna let that person know. And really, when somebody takes notice of something about us, it makes a huge impact on our lives. Um, there's nothing worse than people being unnoticed. And that's really sad. And oftentimes we go through our days and people are left unnoticed. So if we can notice, and that's even noticing good and right. Mm -hmm. I, think, I like that one on there, sharing your experiences too, because we can relate with someone and let them know that we struggled and we've got through that. I think that can be really beneficial, helpful. You got it. And person. those graphics were so important because mm -hmm. oftentimes it's happening via text. Mm -hmm. What can I say back to someone? How can I start a conversation? You know, so play this piece again. Take a picture of that screen. Have it ready when you're ready to have a conversation with someone. Rachel, let's talk with you now. Tell us how you got involved with Be Nice, and if you don't mind opening up with us and everyone at home about your story and how you struggled and how you got through that. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually went to high school at a Be Nice high school. So I was a part of our Be Nice group uh, in that space. And then as I went into college is when I really had those first times of struggling with my mental health and starting to notice some changes in myself. Um, and ultimately those changes led to a point where I was um, not safe and I had a suicide attempt uh, my junior year um, and really it began when I went into college I started to notice things like I was just angry a lot right and it wasn't really matching up with what was going on in my life um, I had uh, a great team behind me I was playing soccer at Hope and I was doing fairly well in my academics um, but that was just kind of one of those first things and then as things went on I started getting tired a lot and I wasn't able to keep up with my daily needs my daily responsibilities like going to class, um, going to my workouts, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so quickly I had some people notice and they actually reached out and my mom reached out and I ended up seeing a therapist for a little bit and I got on some medication and I felt like I was doing the right things, right? I'm checking off those boxes you're supposed to do. Um, but as I went back in uh, to school my sophomore year, I started to feel the same way and I fell into those same patterns. And because of that, I really felt like I failed in that treatment. Um, so instead of really staying vulnerable in that space, I started to lie to people and kind of hide how I was really feeling. Um, and that lasted for a little bit. And actually I had an emergency surgery before my exams my junior year in the fall. And that really just exposed how far behind I was. Um, so I was really far behind in school. Um, now I was taking a break to heal uh, my body. And that kind of made me understand that I was bearing a lot uh, below the surface. And so I talked to my mom, I pulled back my second semester, hoping to give myself a little bit of a break. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And so about a month in, um, I had a really bad week 
and I stayed in my room pretty much the whole time. I wasn't at the dining hall. I wasn't going to class. And I had some friends reaching out. Do you want to go do this? How are you? Know, are you okay? I, had, I had didn't see you today. Um, and it was so much easier to lie than to try and explain or even try and understand myself what these scary feelings I was having inside. And those feelings were suicidal feelings. Um, and what I knew about them or what I felt was what I now know is passive, um, suicidal feelings of just wishing to be done. It would be so much easier to not be here anymore or not be dealing with this anymore. But I really believed I would never hurt myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until this really bad week and I had a really bad night that I went for a drive um, and I found myself in the parking lot with a handful of pills um, and I broke. And I, I took that about a half a bottle of medication. Um, and as I sat there, the women's basketball team came home from an away game on the bus and I remembered what it felt like to be on that bus, to be a part of that team and all these good things I had in my life. Um, and I realized there's a lot more out there for me. Um, so really in that moment, those protective factors saved my life. Uh, so I called 911 and you know, campus safety and all these people came out to help me. And I remember on the ambulance just thinking to myself, I'm not supposed to be this person, right? I was always the one that had it together, was really independent, uh, but there I was three years later uh, in the back of an ambulance for a suicide attempt. So I really had to admit to myself that it was time uh, to let people in, to accept that help, and to give myself grace in that healing process as well. So um, through all that, I was able to take some time off and really, really focus on my recovery and what that did for me was allow me to come back into my senior year and kind of be a part of things again with a toolkit and with these people who could really help me in that space. Thank you so much, wow, Rachel, for sharing that opening with us, and we appreciate you for being here with us. If you'd like to listen to this conversation or learn more about Be Nice, we'll have a link on our website shortly, woodtv.com.